Welcome to the News Hour. We begin in West Africa with a coup attempt that's underway in Niger. Witnesses report that military vehicles have been blocking the entrance to President Mohamed Bazoum's presidential palace in the capital. Now, Bazoum's official Twitter account said some presidential guards have staged a mutiny but have failed to gain the support of the armed forces. Supporters of the president have been gathering in the capital in a show of support. So let's bring in Emma Idris, who's following developments for us from Abuja in neighbouring Nigeria. Emma, it's a fast-moving and quite complicated story because obviously, you know, it, it's changing on the ground. What do we actually know about the standoff between the army and those that are, you might say, guarding the president in his palace? Well, the... Forces loyal to President Mohamed Bazoum have mobilized from the outskirts of Niamey, and uh, they are positioning themselves in various locations in the city, in the capital city, and they said they have occupied all the strategic, strategic locations inside Niamey and other key locations in the country as well. And now they say they're calling on the mutineers to lay down their arms and surrender. We understand that there have been some negotiations going on since the early hours of today. Uh, we recently, uh, just a few, a few hours ago, we understand that former president, the immediate past president of Niger, Mohamed Yusuf, led that negotiations, but it didn't go anywhere. What we're expecting now is the arrival of the president of Benin Republic, Patrice Talon, who will lead another uh, round of negotiations, probably on behalf of the economic community of West African states, whose chairman, by the way, Nigerian President Bola Ametinibu, was talking tough just hours ago, saying that they will never accept an unconstitutional change of government in the region and that they will not, they will not tolerate this anymore. We also understand that there is a military delegation from neighboring Nigeria in uh, Niger, but it's not clear whether or not they have anything to do with the coup that happened today. So basically things are changing first. Like you said in the introduction, uh, pro-government supporters marched in the capital when they tried to gain access into the presidential palace. Gunshots were fired and they scampered for safety. It's not clear who fired those shots, but it's expected that it's the mutineers who fired those shots. Are we getting any indication or any sign of demands from those that are holding the president as such in the palace? Um, there's been no obvious signs of any violence at the moment, but the tension is high and that can always worry negotiators when they're trying to talk to both sides. Exactly, um, Sohel. When, when, you, when you see the coups that happened in Africa, from Mali to Guinea and Burkina Faso, the presidents of those countries were held hostage by the mutineers or the coup plotters as negotiated bargaining chips. Eventually, when they were given those demands, they set the presidents free. But however, in Niger, in the case of Niger, what we're hearing at the moment is that the coup plotters don't, have, don't enjoy total support of the military. So basically, what we think may be happening at the moment, what, which we're not sure of, is probably to find a soft landing for the coup plotters. It, we don't know how far that has gone, and we are not sure whether that is part of the negotiations. But again, we also heard earlier on, before uh, news of negotiations going on between the, uh, the coup, coup plotters and authorities, we also heard that they wanted President Mahmoud uh, uh, Bazou Mohammed to sign an undertaking that he's relinquishing power and that there will be uh, some form of a transition government in the country for probably 20 to 26 months before they hand over to civilian administration. That, too, is not confirmed. But what we know right now is that negotiations have been going on since morning and more negotiations are on the way. And this shows probably that maybe the regional grouping, ECOWAS and AU, are probably trying to negotiate to bring the stalemate to an end. We'll see what happens in the coming hours for the moment. Emma Idris, there for us in Abuja. Thank you. Now, the African Union has called on the treasonous soldiers in Niger involved to stop immediately. Charles Stratford has more on the regional impact of the crisis. Well, there have been some statements put out from ECOWAS, that's the regional body responsible for security of West Africa. Some strong statements from ECOWAS condemning what they describe as a coup attempt in the most vigorous way. They also said that it calls on all actors to release the president, um, who was democratically elected in 2021. Uh, it says ECOWAS will hold responsibility, uh, hold responsible anyone implicated in the violation of security of the president, 
his family and the government and the people of Niger. So some strong language there coming out from the regional bloc. But just in a wider context, this has potentially huge implications. Let's not forget that the international community, or certainly Western members of the international community, have been piling in lots of money into Niger. It's been seen as many as one of the last bastions of potential security against what has developed in recent years, a huge security threat right the way across Sahel, the Sahel region, that's the southern Sahara, in countries like Mali, in Burkina Faso, indeed in Niger. We've seen in recent weeks um, the UN's peacekeeping force based in Mali, for example, around 15,000 um, peacekeepers now being pulled out after calls from the military junta in charge of Mali. Um, we understand that um, there are still French troops inside, um, inside Niger, but, um, you know, just as an example yet again of, of, of the instability of this region, this is one of, of a number of coups that have happened in that area in the last um, in the last couple of years, four coups in, in, in Mali and Burkina Faso. So this has huge implications regionally for a security threat from organizations, groups like ISIS, like Al-Qaeda, like Boko Haram, that these countries are struggling to deal with. So a lot of uncertainty. The situation remains very unclear in Niger this afternoon. Niger faces many challenges, as Charles mentioned, including widespread poverty and attacks by armed groups. Al-Qaeda affiliates such as ISIL and Boko Haram are waging war to control the Sahel Desert region. The battle for power has caused hundreds of thousands to flee their homes. Close to four and a half million people require humanitarian assistance. Around five million of Niger's 26 million population don't have enough to eat. The West African nation hosts Western military bases, including US military drones and French personnel. Now, it's a hub for French counter-terrorism operations in the Sahel, making it one of their last remaining strongholds in the region. Niger is also an important transit route for migrants from south of the Sahara Desert, heading north towards Europe, across the Mediterranean Sea. Musa Kondo is the executive director of the Sahel Institute and joins me now live from Mali's capital, Banaka. Good to have you with us, Mr Kondo, on the programme. In your opinion, what's initiated the action by the Palace Guards? Uh, hello. Can you ask, excuse me, can you just repeat the question, please? Yes, what do you think has initiated this action by the Presidential Guards? Um, so... Since, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, I would say since the, the beginning of the mandate of uh, the elected president, uh, President Bazoum, he felt, and the situation was so weak, he'd been very aggressive against the, uh, the military in power, uh, especially in Mali, because he knows uh, the democratic system should not uh, encourage such kind of uh, uh, taking over the power. So the thing we've heard from... Uh, uh, our correspondent and our, our colleagues in the field in Yame is the way he wanted to move, to remove the, the, the hate of the unit of the presidential guard who have been in the position uh, for like uh, close to 10 years. And certainly this creates not just a, a, a momental uh, frustration, but also think people have been uh, thinking a lot since the first attempt of coup, which not succeeded. And now, uh, as we've been hearing and following the situation since uh, the morning, uh, it's uh, like they've been negotiating because they, 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 the Niger Armed Forces uh, groups and uh, uh, the other part of the Guard, National Guard, were not involved in it. No. So the, the negotiation of the government still to get them involved. It seems to be that this is a very small group of individuals that's holding the president in the presidential palace. Uh, and the role of the army is quite important, as you suggested. They're not taking any part in this. Uh, how do you see this now unfolding in the, in the coming hours? Because we've got a, a standoff between military forces and we've got diplomats and regional groups who are trying to find a negotiated way to come out of this incident. Yes, uh, the, the first hours of it, it was really surprising a lot of people uh, as the couple of days or the couple of uh, months back, things were pretty stable in Niger. And not just about the Nigerian forces, but also the international forces based in Niger 
and engaging in combating uh, terrorist groups and jihadist groups, as you just mentioned. But now, having this situation going on, the, the, the conversation is to how to get it out, uh, not in a bloodshed uh, situation. So now the negotiation is that they also uh, Bazoum, uh, the President Bazoum, I mean, understanding the support he has as he recently traveled to Nigeria, uh, talking in Malian cases and uh, been a, a Chad, Mali, and, and Burkina Faso. So now uh, the way to moving forward and also out of this will certainly remain the, the negotiation as we, we've seen the President Mahamadou Yusufu mm. uh, involved. And two of them are really close uh, in terms of personal and also professional uh, colleagues. So hopefully we, we, we see how it will move and if the, the, the Niger forces will join the coup and all together uh, create a transitional body uh, to get the, 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 the country moving forward uh, in terms of uh, combating the armed groups and also social demand, which is growing uh, the couple of uh, past months. Indeed. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a moving situation. One, I think we'll just have to wait to see how that develops in the coming hours. I mean, there is a great deal of instability in the region, isn't there? Uh, to the east and west of Niger as well, to its southern borders. Its neighbouring countries are dealing with either their own political instability or that of armed groups like Boko Haram, ISIL, Al-Qaeda. It's a melting pot of discontent uh, for Niger, and it may spill over onto Niger's soil if they can't control their own borders and their own security. Yes, this has been very challenging because at a, a certain couple of parts of miles, uh, the government of Niger and other communities have uh, been uh, arming uh, local communities to define themselves. So when you have like thousands of people with armed and combating themselves, which is not part of the national uh, armed forces, this creates a very confusion in, uh, in terms of organization and also uh, who is commanding what and where. So now having all these uh, people uh, going or living in the same context, and uh, despite the international communication uh, the President Bazoum received from uh, uh, international partners and also the communication of uh, uh, propagandists who've been saying like uh, Mali is getting uh, putting out uh, former colonizers and Bazoum is uh, uh, receiving them also step getting back from what is trying to build as a unity in the country. So with certain fact we can definitely say uh, certainly people some will support him in terms of supporting the government, the democracy as they seeing how uh, confused and frustrated things are here right now in Mali and Burkina Faso and not get the country going through this as they are used to live in a, a military regime. Sure. Uh, but it will be enough to maintain the democratic regime of uh, President Bazoum at the end of the, the, this uh, situation. Well, we shall see what happens in the coming hours, certainly. Uh, Musa Kondo, thanks for joining us from Bamako in Mali. Thank you.